Well, for you, is the conventional intellectual position, as well as the so-called sophisticated position, has been that popular music in this country was declining because things like rhythm and blues and rock and roll and the like were mechanical and decadent and were the kind of things that uh, adults manufactured for the kids, that the kids didn't really have any say in it. What's your view about, about this? In other words, what is the kind of popular music that moves you? And where does it come from? That I just like to listen to? Yeah, I'll listen to, and also increasingly as, you know, in terms of what people call folk rock, the way you're broadening your bases in well, that way. Uh, whatever this folk rock is, you yeah. know, I, uh, I, don't, I don't really listen to it that, that much. You know, it's more in terms of, uh, in terms of sound, mm -hmm. which, uh, you know, a few years ago, uh, when there wasn't such a big bit of folk, uh, or folk rock or, or whatever have you, uh, when there wasn't really hardly much of anything, um, when there wasn't people talking about music so much, was just because it was, uh, you know, there wasn't any kind of sound really. Mm -hmm. But whereas the sound could be, you know, transformed in, in a lot of things, a lot of ways you can get sound. You get a sound with words. You, know, you get a sound with just plain bare sound. What about rhythm and blues and, 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 and rock? Well, rhythm and blues particularly. Uh, what do you find in it of value? In other words, it's been put down. Well, a, 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 I'm an authority, you know. Yeah. I, I just listen to it. That's about all. I I, uh, I don't listen to hard, straight rhythm and blues in terms of uh, uh, the del satins and uh, <coughs> motions, those kind of people that, that mm -hmm. recorded a long time ago. Just a straight four chord thing. I mean, it's advanced pretty much farther than that now, and that seems kind of old, you know. Yeah. Now, rhythm and blues, which would be uh, much more uh, contrived kind of chords and yeah. different sounding things. Pardon me, I still don't think we're getting anything, you know? Yes, you are. Yeah? Want to check it? Just for a Okay. All right. Well, what about the people who, uh, who still say, you know, that the there aren't any good songs anymore, like Cole Porter or Jerome Curran, you well, know. They, you know, they're just looking for that kind of, uh, that kind of music. Uh, they're probably right, you mm -hmm. know. If they, if they think, you know, there are no more good songs like the ones Cole Porter wrote and George Gershwin, I guess they are right, you know. But what is the music that's popular now? Uh, and it's increasingly by, by people who come out of the rhythm and blues scene. What is that music saying to the to the younger generation? Because I, I've never seen anything quite like the kind of response there's been. Uh, the music that's being played now. Yeah. You know, for I like really the, don't know. I really have. I really have no idea. I know one thing. You know, everybody around a certain the certain age I met now. It's about 24. You know, everybody around 24, 25, 26, 23. No matter what they were doing in the past, you know, years, I mean, I know has been, uh, was turned on to rock and roll a long time ago, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, it's just, it's just something everybody's tried to hide for a long time, you know. Yeah. Uh, what was there in the rock and roll that, uh, that really moved people your age? Well, it was just, a, 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 you know, rock and roll country and western music, which is just a... Uh, uh, total kind of feeling which is not the same as uh, uh, you know watching TV or uh, or being taught anything in school or, or being you know just a total other kind of form of, of sound and, and which puts your head in a different place uh, it you know the reason it died out is because it was uh, you know it got uh, saturated and it got you know uh, drawn to, to a degree, there was no way to make it in it anymore. Mm -hmm. Like you had to have friends to play with, yeah. you know. You had to have money to buy electricity. You had to, you know, you had to keep a band which costs money. And uh, that's all very hard. Yeah. While it was going, you think it's accurate to say that the news, that kind of music also had more emotion, more direct feeling than most oh, of what sure. else was around. Oh sure, it still does. You know, uh, that's you know, it still does. You just can't take that away from it. That's 
you know, that's why most people, you can just about pinpoint the people that don't like it. You can just about usually walk on the street and see people and know who wouldn't yeah. like it. I mean, it's a, it's a, they wouldn't like that. They wouldn't like the people that play it, probably, you know. And it's uh, It's got to do with more than just, uh, it's got to do with a lot of things, really, which overlap. You say you can pinpoint the people who don't like it, like cow. You mean the way they walk, where they hold themselves? Oh, sure, the way they light a cigarette, you can tell. <laughs> yeah. The, like, what they like. You mean inhibited? Uh, no, inhibited, it really, it's just a whole other thing. Uh, something which I don't think is ever going to be brought across to anybody. I mean, because deep down, you know, people either, most people do like it. I mean, they have to like it. Uh, a lot of people are, you know, it just represents something a lot of people are, don't want to even think about, probably. That's why they, they raise such a commotion. But it, when you think about it, really, it, it comes down to it. it. comes down to it as everybody's just putting themselves on, really, yeah. because if uh, they didn't like it, you know, they, uh, the people that, uh, they have to let their kids do something. We're speaking now of people who go to school, in high school, and buy all the records. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, they have to let them do something because, you know, they really, don't really give them too much of anything else. So they let them buy records. You know, yeah. they don't really know what they're listening to, but now I guess they're, they're finding out what they're listening to. You know, they could easily distinguish the whole thing by just cutting with their allowances, and there would be no more records. Uh, <laughs> when you say they don't give them much of anything else, you mean much of a feeling of, what do you call it, interpersonal? Uh, well, I mean, who, takes, who treats their kids like they treat their friends, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that says it. Um, who are some of the people in the country and western the rhythm and blues field i don't mean influences now the people that you just enjoy listening to especially well i don't like to listen too much country and western people uh i like to, uh, I like to listen to some of their songs yeah that's us sing but i, I get well monotonized by listening to too many i like buck owens so he's all right and uh hank williams and george <coughs> Owens. Uh, they're all all the time usually you can make some sort of sound, mm -hmm. you know. But uh, the other people are just the songs they sing, I think. How about in the rhythm and blues and, and rock and roll fields? Whom do you especially, you know, who strikes you especially? Oh, I mean, uh, just name a name. So I, just, you know, if, if you're almost like free association, if you're thinking in terms of just pleasure and listening, who would you think of? Well, I listen to all the Motown records. Mm -hmm. That's the Wilson Pickett. Otis Redding, I guess. Charlie Rich. Yeah. How about Chuck Berry, who uh, seems to be oh, rediscovered so by a lot of people? Well, he's okay. I like yeah. Chuck Berry. This goes back to something you started to say before. And it, it's about the generational gap. I've seen it among some of the kids who work uh, in SNCC and Students for Democratic Society, you know, where you, you can't trust anybody over 30. Uh, well, that's not really true. That's, that's just a fallacy. Yeah. I think that's the right word. Fallacy. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. How much of that gap, though, does exist? This feeling that the older generation just isn't I don't, I don't know many of those people. Mm -hmm. I, I never really have. That was just a thing from the newspapers. The newspapers seemed to say that nobody likes anybody over 30, and, mm -hmm. and the people that read it believed it, but I don't know if that's true. I don't really, we never sit around and talk about anybody over 30, because yeah. you know, I'm almost 30 myself. <laughs> yeah. So you wouldn't go with the thesis that uh, all adults are almost square by definition, because they are, they are over a certain age? No, no, I, I wouldn't, I don't, it doesn't matter, I have no prejudices on age. Yeah. Communication depends on two people, right? Essentially. Well, if, you, if there's such a thing as communication, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <coughs> you were saying you're almost, uh, well, you're about six years from 30. Are you at all concerned about um, somehow not becoming insulated, rather? Being not uh, as open as you are now? You know, no, I don't know if it's about that. Uh, the, you know, everything will still be the same. It's too, too late to change anything like that. It's, uh, I'm certainly not going to cop out, though, and become any kind of, uh, you know, school teacher. I mean, yeah. out in Vermont, you know, living in an old cottage, teaching English once a week, <laughs> reading poetry to, uh, you know, the girls or something. I'm not going to do anything like that. Yeah. So far as you look ahead, if you do, do you intend to pretty much stay in what you're doing now? 
Yeah, I'll be taken to some other degrees, make a movie, making a movie sometime. I'll do that. I have a book coming out, but it's just, uh, I mean, it, it's very average to me, you know, I can't really be excited about it. I've worked on it kind of hard at certain times, but now it's all done, and now it's, it means very little. Is that the one that Macmillan's putting out? Yeah. Was it about Los Angeles, or? No, it's not about anything, it's just, uh, just a book of uh, words. What's the movie going to be like? Well, the movie would be like a song, really. Uh, it's not going to, it won't be any kind of, well, this is the first movie here, and we have to uh, set an example for the rest of the movies. Mm -hmm. This is going to be like a song. It's going to be a straight movie, and uh, maybe a horror movie or something. Yeah. Something very natural. <laughs> Are you going to write it? I'll write some of it, yeah. And who's going to produce it or put it together? That's not decided yet. Yeah. Um, once when we were talking, you were saying that you have no particular feeling of support for groups like the NAACP because they're too middle class, too slow. What civil rights groups are you that interested in? I'm not really interested in any of them, mm -hmm. to tell you the truth. Uh, um, I used to know some of the people in SNCC when it's about 1960, you know, and uh, I've lost all contact. I, evidently, there was something wrong someplace, or else, uh, you know, I, 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 I would have uh, been a president of SNCC right now. <laughs> but uh, I, I don't know. I, I can't go along with all this. I mean, it's just laughing matter. This, I mean, anybody that's, uh, uh, you know, I mean, a lot of people take all that very seriously, like Roy, like Roy Jones and all this kind of yeah. stuff. But, Kind of, it's sort of just kind of funny if you got to think about it because even Leroy Jones is going to die, you know. I mean, if, uh, whoever Leroy Jones is, I just saw him on television. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so your feeling is that these social movements or whatever tend to get kind of exaggerated in importance? Well, not exaggerated in importance. Of course, people are starving, you know. People are, are a lot of people are in bad trouble. But, uh, Either you make your choice, you know, and you go through with it, or you don't uh, fuck around, you know, in other people's lives. You know, uh, I got my own life that, you know, and uh, I tried my best to handle that, you know, mm -hmm. to try to handle somebody else's life. Uh, you really have to, you know, be a, a very powerful person, you know. Yeah. You have to sort of uh, have you got a lot of responsibility on your hands, and. Uh, the more people's lives you're, you know, you're responsible for, you know, the bigger the weight is. Mm -hmm. uh, look at uh, President Johnson. Look at him. Uh, he doesn't <laughs> seem like a very normal fellow to me. You know, you can understand why. Really, not very normal in what ways? Well, you take a look at him. <laughs> I mean, you can just see a picture of him. You can see yeah. that he's a little, uh, he's a little worried about something. Yeah. What about? Um well, like Joan, for example, has for a long time been involved in things like Vietnam and peace demonstrations and the, and the like. Do, do you have any uh, particular interest in that? Well, you know, it might sound very funny, but, uh, you know, like, uh, uh, I can only talk about it in terms of me, you know. Sure. It's like, I, it's like if, I, if I was, uh, if somebody told me right now, uh, you're going to have to die in an hour, you know. So there will really be nothing I have to clean up, you know, or unfinished business, no, uh, you know, I, I could I very easily accept it. I mean, uh, then that would be the way it's going to be. Uh, you know, like, what, it, it's, uh, I don't really know, you know, like, uh, on who, who, who is going to be, better for all the, uh, I mean, I don't know how long these people want to live, you know, mm -hmm. I, I, don't, I don't know, uh, you know, if they're looking for eternity, and looking to be moralized, or, you know, whatever have you, what, why they do these things. You mean, you know, I mean who, who get involved in the peace things, you mean? Well, no, not this, especially, I'm talking about, uh, uh, I'm talking about people that, uh, aren't really, not really completely straight. You know, mm -hmm. people are afraid of something, but act as if maybe they're not. And, 
you know, I think that's fine. You know, since yeah. our peace demonstrations and all this kind of uh, thing, you know, it's just a little more complicated in my mind. Uh, I, I know where, where it is in a feeling, but or to put that feeling into words, I really can't do it too good. And if I even attempted, I know it wouldn't come out the right way. And, yeah. and then all in all, I know if even if I did, it wouldn't matter anyway to anybody. Yeah. You know, so, so it. Uh, I mean, I think what Joan Baez is doing is just marvelous. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, it's not your way. It's, it's just, not, it's just uh, I mean, uh, I think that's just wonderful. But, yeah. uh, you know, I, if there was, if there's, if she ever needed my help for anything, you know, God willing, I wish she'd come and ask, but. Mm. But you're not going to go out looking for demonstrations or things like that? No, uh, I've done most of that, you know, I, I went through that too. <coughs> and, uh. Uh, you know, it definitely has to be done. Yeah. But, uh, you know, everybody talks about, uh, you know, I mean, just the names that strike familiar chords, you know, like uh, Jesus Christ. You know, like, we got a good he did, you can say, but, you know, what good where, you know, for who, you know, how, when, you know, and, and, and look what they did to him. Mm -hmm. and, uh, to, and everybody's talking about him, you know. But uh, how does anybody know the way he really felt? You know, mm -hmm. it certainly has been such a long time ago that I think it's just about impossible to even find out anything about him. It's just been so, uh, you know, people have written so much that uh, I don't know. You just have to believe, you know. Yeah. That's a dangerous business there, just believing because you're really sacrificing a whole lot. So that for you, the thing is to live your own life as best you can and stay as straight as you can. Yeah, stay, you know, just, uh, I guess so, I mean, in terms of just words, you know, yeah. the best, uh, yeah. best words, but uh, it, it's like, uh, it's like one time I wanted to write a novel, you know, and so I spent a lot of time, you know, I spent about six months off and on trying to put this novel together, but I know, you know, and finally one day I come to a conclusion, like, uh, okay, you know, so I got this novel put together. You know, like, is this going to be, you know, the novel, the statement? Yeah. You know, so I'm, is this my message, my thing? And uh, no matter how many, I had about a thousand, you know, th you know th about 500 pages of it. Mm -hmm. I said, no, you know, of course not. You know, it's bullshit. You know, this is nothing. I'm just, if I finish this novel, I'm just going to have to write another one. If I finish this novel, it's not going to come out until at least a year and a half or two years before. Uh, before, you know, now, uh, it's going to be a completely different thing by the time it does come out. And by the time it does come out, everybody's going to say how great it is, or else they're going to put it down. Meantime, I'm not even going to be there anymore. And I won't, it won't even be me that wrote that, that novel. And uh, from there, I don't have to live up to that novel. You know, mm -hmm. and uh, to be writing another novel, people are going to ask, ask me what what I'm doing. I'm going to uh, so I'm gonna have to say I'm writing another novel. <laughs> you, know, I'm, you know, it's a, uh, it's like it just, it just and, and when you even get it done, all it does is it helps you to get to parties, go to more parties, <laughs> and uh, you know, uh, and sign autographs and give away three copies of the book, and uh, you know, you can have a ball for a couple of weeks. But that meant to all that was records, you know, yeah. and uh, things, and. Uh, it's not the same thing. Every time I write a song, it's like writing novels. It just takes me a lot less time, you know, and uh, I can get it down you know, to where, uh, you know, I can reread it in my head a lot. And uh, believe me, you know, like, they're not, the songs that are written are just not, uh, you know, that's what they are in me, because, uh, you know, it's, uh, I, stand, I can't stand on any of them, you know. I mean, like, they're just uh, songs. You don't feel then as if you have to compete with yourself every time you write another one. No, no, I don't. Uh, I somewhat do in a very funny way, but I, I don't really, once I can get to in the, the movement of what I want to do with the music, I, it comes very natural, but... Uh, it's not really a competition thing. Uh, going back for a minute, to do to the opposite of Joan, a lot of the things you hear now from, let's say, from the American Legion to Johnson, is uh, how come these kids don't realize that uh, they'd be, how does it go, they'd, 
do they, are they saying that they'd, they'd rather be red than dead? You know, you know that whole, how that whole thing goes. How do you feel about that kind of slogan? Rather be red than dead? Yeah. In other words, you got well, to make like this so-called. I don't really go for slogans in any kind of way, but uh, you know, I mean, I'm sure if that's a slogan there, I'm sure there's another slogan that says I'd rather be dead than red, which yeah. I wouldn't go for that slogan either. You know, mm -hmm. yeah, slogans are just uh, you know a misusage of time, really. It's, uh, yeah. uh, there's nobody who's going to help out the world any. You know, there just is nobody. I mean, you know. You know, you just take a look out on the street and then things change. You, know, you can open up that curtain so the room would be different. You know, it's, uh, there's too many people, you know, that, that uh, have things to do. Are you ever bothered by things like the Dominican Republic and Vietnam in the sense that the whole, the whole thing may yet blow up? Yeah, well, I'm, part, I'm sure it might, you know, yeah. but uh, it's going to happen probably, you know, and when it happens, I... You know, the most I can say is that it wasn't me, <laughs> but that's, uh, you know, that's about all. I mean, uh, I, I don't want, I certainly don't want to be walking around with any kind of, uh, you know, any kind of nuclear uh, thing on me, you know, any kind of, you know, my groin up, you know, six inches and my elbow, uh, you know, uh, magnetized a thousand times and, you know, six legs and anything like that. I, mean, I don't want to be caught in that position. I, I would have to get somebody to, uh, I'd have to have a good friend along, you know, get me, get me on that, but uh, I don't know. Let me try fantasy for a, for a minute. Suppose you were somehow in, in a position like Johnson's and you had a deal with, uh, let's say, the Chinese communists. What, what, what would you do? Well, first of all, I can never talk in terms of if. Yeah. I mean, I'll answer your question just in the, for the sake of fantasy, yeah. but I'm not going to think that, uh, you know, <laughs> First of all, if I, you mean if I was President Johnson right now? Uh, let's say if you were President. <laughs> if, I, if I was President? Yeah. Well, let's see, if I was President, uh, first thing I'd do, I'd have all my friends in the White House right away. I'd completely, completely revise the whole White House, and everybody that works there would just look a whole other way. Everybody would have to, have to wear high-collared shirts. They would, they would uh, have to be a section where everybody wore flowers on their tie. <laughs> and they would... Uh, they would uh, There'd be a whole different set of heroes right away. Like who? Well, like, uh, I think, uh, I, I, instead of uh, talking with uh, Martin Luther King about anything, I would have to talk to uh, Roebuck Staples. You know, he would be the spokesman for, the, you know, for, for that. And I would have uh, all, all the, you know, the, just all the, the whole place just redecorated completely with swings and, and stuff teeter totters yeah. and for the first week we just have a party to get straight <laughs> you know and uh you know the, uh, the Lord, I'd probably send for uh Mao tell him to come out and see what we were like <laughs> <laughs> what else would you do that's like in foreign policy foreign policy mm -hmm. Well, you figure then, if you'd like, if he saw what we were like, then things could be a little less uh, dissonant. Uh, well, I don't know. You know, I don't even know what he's like to begin with. I would, uh, well, you know, you see those pictures of all those guys, and all the chicks, and carrying guns, and, uh, and uh, you know, I, I, I know that he probably has. Uh, Well, he likes his uh, women to be tough, you know. Um, he would probably come over here and be flabbergasted, <laughs> you know. He'd have to have some tough women waiting for him, you know, in the lobbies. <laughs> I'd fix it up nice for him, you know, if he came over, no doubt about that. What did you think of the, um, of the free speech movement and all that at the University of California and the way that sort of thing is spreading to a lot of other colleges? Is that a good sign or does it mean anything? Well, it's college, you know. It's, it's, that's nice, you know. It's, that really is very nice and, and that they do that at college. Uh, but, but uh, it's, uh, um, What exactly does it do that we know for, for, for other people who don't go to college? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, 
And I think it's a tremendous that they, they would have enough courage to do what they did. But, uh, you know, I, I, I don't really know too much about it. I have all those things that they're... Mm -hmm. I can't possibly imagine anybody, you know, uh, wanting what they were wanting, that's all. What do you mean? Well, I, I guess they were wanting to pick it or, or wanting to have free speech. Yeah. Well, I have free speech, you know. I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't have those problems that they have, you know. Like they, they I don't have, to, I don't really have to put up with any teachers, you know. Or, or I don't have to have any degree. I don't have to take any tests. I don't have to uh, sort any kind of philosophies out of my mind. I don't have to memorize anything, you know. I don't have to, uh, you know, look like the next person. I don't have to, uh, you know. I, don't, I just don't have these problems. I don't have. You don't have to join a free speech movement. Well, I, don't, I don't really have anybody that's, that's supporting me, you know. So I don't have. I don't have to. I don't have to uh, rebel against this, you know. Do you ever have any uh, not regrets, but let's say curiosity about college, about going yourself? <laughs> That'd be silly, wouldn't it? <laughs> I, I, I have no regrets about it. I, I, uh, I played at some, you know, but I didn't really get out to see too much, and, you know, uh, I, you know, it's a nice place to be. The uh, colleges are really nice, you know, uh, they're, they're certainly a lot, uh, a lot quieter than the city. They, 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 the ones out in the country are fantastic, you know, yeah. you know? <laughs> like, you know, like old age homes, you know? <laughs> you know, uh, they're nice, I would like to go to one, you know, just to relax once in a while, but, uh, you know, just to sit on the banks of some river. Most of them are on the rivers, and, you know, and uh, you know, just do that. But I can't imagine going to any classes or reading any books that they would give me. I imagine I strike up a few friendships with some people around. Yeah. But that's you know. You just pick up on what interests you in terms of books or anything else. I take. Yeah, yeah, I I do. I don't really read that much. And when I do read anything, it must be small. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, I don't know. I, I, I go see movies once in a while, I guess, and stuff like that. I remember you're reluctant to give advice to anybody else, but do you think some of the people either in college or about to go might think a while about whether they ought to go? You know, just looking at yourself, for example, not as a model, but well, as a... things were different, you know, when, when I didn't go to college, you know. Things really were much different than they are now. You know, like, in the, you, then, uh, there was a group of people, sort of, you know, that were just bumming around the country, you know. And, uh, I was one of them, you know. But, uh, things are, seem to be different than they are now, like, I can't imagine. You know, bumming around the country now with any of these people that are bumming around the country now. You know, what's like the difference? Different. Well, see, and then, and back then, to make it, you know, was just out of the question. You know, mm -hmm. it was more or less a thing of uh, you know, from here to there, and that's what it was. It was groovy, you know, and uh, and it seemed that a lot of people were groovy then. But now you can still see people that are still doing it, and they're just totally whacked out. You know, like uh, they're still there, they're doing it, but but they're all they're, they're all tw twisted up, and and they don't want to get the thing they don't want to do it anymore. And even even the well, you know, you, you can uh, you can take that whole you know, the beat generation thing. I just read a little bit of that kind of stuff, but. Mm -hmm. <coughs> You know, like, uh, what stuff really was there, except for Allen Ginsberg, you know? Yeah. <coughs> or, uh, you know, uh, these guys, but I, you know, I can even think of, I can't really I think of any of those other people that did their thing. I mean, I mean, the ones who are doing it now don't even get any, don't seem to get any, any kick. Well, it's, it is a kick, you know, like, yeah. you, do, you do things for a kick, you, you know? Uh, that's why you really do things. You do things for a kick. Mm -hmm. I mean, you don't want to do anything you don't want to do. You know, uh, the, the hang-up comes in is when most people they, they get out, they get involved in something, they get attached, you know, and then sooner or later they come to the conclusion that they're not getting any kicks anymore, and uh, they see other people getting kicks. 
that's fine, you know, like that, I guess this happens. But the problem comes in is when you want to stop other people from getting kicks. Yeah. You know, just because, you know, it, it, it hangs you up. You know, like it, it drives you farther than the suicide. You know, but uh, I can, you know, I don't get too many kicks anymore nowadays. You know, once in a while I do. But I certainly don't want to stop anybody else from getting them. It's, it's funny to, to hear these people talking mixed things in the country rock, you know. Yeah. Country rock, you know, was Elvis Presley. Tired yeah. Elvis Presley, you yeah. know. I mean, how can we say the next big thing's going to be country rock? Yeah. This is Elvis Presley's first records, and if you have a better name for him, you know, there isn't a better name. Uh, this, all this has been done before. It's just a, a you know, it's like a, another another time going over only with it. Different times. Yeah. Did you like those first Presley records oh, when they came out? Sure, everybody liked those. Yeah. yeah. I just didn't like them anymore after Teddy Bear and stuff like that. Yeah. But I, I got all his early records. Oh, oh. <coughs> you were saying that um, you don't get as many kicks now as you used to. Why is that? Do you figure the fame? Or well, the, the, the kicks, you know, like uh, I've done everything that I really want to do. You know, <coughs> uh, like, like now, I, I mean. It's like I don't get any kick out of, you know, like the first time I say I was in Rome, I saw, you know, I was standing there digging the, you know, that what do you call that big stadium, Coliseum. The Coliseum. Yeah. Yeah. And it was a kick, you know, just, just being, just the whole thing, you know, the whole, the whole uh, feeling of, of being around there, whatever happened, whatever else happened. The second time I was there, you know, like it just distracted me, you know, like this Coliseum, how beautiful it was, it was distracting, you know. This, I can, and then something else in you know, Portugal, man, all this beauty was just very distracting. You know, it's just, uh, it's, uh... Do you ever get tired of Big Sur? Do you find that distracting? I never spent that much time out yeah. there, but I do find it a little distracting, yes. Yeah. Well, you're saying you've done just about everything you wanted to, and yet you're 24. What do you get to look forward to? Well, <laughs> I don't know. I have to think about it, I might start me a bubblegum factory or something. <laughs> <laughs> different kinds of cartoons inside. Yeah. So you haven't, you haven't lost the expectation that there may be more kicks ahead. Oh, no, it doesn't like that. Well, it's like, it's, it's, it's like, you know, it's not like I can go any place now. Mm -hmm. You know, and something was usually bound to happen, you know, uh, you know, and take your chances, you know. But now I can't really go any place, you know. And even now, when I go anyplace, it's not where, you know, it's more of a chance anything's going to happen because it's, uh, it's a little different. Now it's, now it's sort of like strike and split, you know, it's, uh, yeah. it's a whole different thing. I, I, don't, I, I know and I can see through most of the people, you know, that, that you know, and it's just, uh, it's not any fun, you know, and, uh, like it's more fun just stopping in a red light and watching the people walk by. You know, right? that's really a lot of fun. <laughs> in the sense that what? But you, well, like, it's, like, you know, it's like when you say kick, you know, like yeah. uh, I would think in terms of kicks, you know, uh, just getting on a Greyhound bus for three days, you know, but, uh, you know, and going someplace. Can you do but, that? Uh, I can't do that anymore. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, it's up to, you know, get the Greyhound bus to come to me. <laughs> and uh, I have to hire the bus, you know, and... Uh, Stuff like that is ridiculous, but I mean it's not. It's not really. It's, I'm not complaining or down about it. It's just a, a thing. That's all. It's got to happen to somebody, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> we were talking about college, and I wonder. This isn't quite fantasy, because, well, suppose not you, that you were in charge of a school, but if, if somebody were to ask you, what what should a school be and do so that kids don't get all tied up and uptight the way they, they often well, do. Well, it the shouldn't really be that way. Like, like, school, you know, someone wants to be a doctor, you know, they got to go to school, you know. I mean, obviously, they got to go to school, and they got to learn how to do all these things to be a doctor. But uh, I wouldn't send anybody I know to tell them to go to school, man, unless they wanted to be a doctor. I mean, I don't care what they want to be, mm -hmm. but they want to be a doctor, they want to be something like that, you know, a lawyer or, uh, you know, uh, something like you know something really hard you know mm -hmm. tell them to go to, you know do it you know and, but if you're gonna do it you know do it but the other thing just going to school and reading and writing and taking tests I guess you know and learning learning you know why things happen is just uh, ridiculous in, in face of things that are gonna happen whether you know you you know you know why they happen or not 
So what, uh, should, what should you be doing during those years if you're not going to be a doctor or something, you know, specialized? Well, you should be, it's not what you should be doing. It's, you can do anything you want to do, you know. You can hang out in Mexico for four years, man, you know, and uh, it's, uh, you should know about a lot of things, though, which you don't know, which people keep you away from until you get to be a certain age. Like, for example? Like, for example, everything, you know, yeah. just about anything you can imagine. Uh, it's not, it's not, it's not going to, too many things are looked at as if they're going to kill you, you know, so many, so many habits and things, and they're not going to kill you at all, you know, they might check you up, but it's not going to kill you. Mean, you like sex or pot or yeah, like anything, absolutely yeah. anything, you know, doing a handstand, you know, it's, uh, it's, uh, you know, I don't know, it's, when you come to the, think of it, you know, when a person even goes to college, I mean, I remember I got out of high school, well, I didn't think about it then, but I think about it now, like, what did I really know? When I got out of high school, I mean, what did a school teach me? Yeah. You know, and I can truthfully say that, you know, I haven't used any of that stuff, which I've learned in 12 years, uh, except, you know, adding, maybe, and, and reading, you know, and, and writing. And how to, you know, and that's all, though. You know, like, uh, the rest of it, it just seems to be a thing to take up your time, you know? Uh, which, you know, has got to be. I mean, it can't be another way. Who's going to come around and say, okay, uh, we're going to put out a course that's going to be much harder now, and everybody's going to graduate by the time they're nine, <laughs> you know, and then they'll be ready. They're going to go to college, which could easily be done, yeah. you know, because all you have to do is teach somebody how to read and write. They put them in college, yeah. teach them a little math, and that's really all you have to teach them, really. Mm -hmm. You know, no, who cares who the first president of the United States was? I mean, who cares where Africa is in terms of... You can always look it up. Right. You know, you can carry a encyclopedia around. Yeah. Know. But, uh, you know, I wouldn't want that to happen to anybody that I knew. I mean, I wouldn't make... You know, I mean, most people can't really afford to have their kids be total outcasts, you know, so they wouldn't do that. You know, uh, most people, I guess, would want their kids to be, you know, with other kids and normal, having a good time and birthday parties and yeah. stuff like that. Well, that's all fine, you know, too. How would you raise your kid? How would I? Yeah. I have no idea. <laughs> I certainly, you know, wouldn't uh, hide anything from him or anything like that. I mean, a kid would, you know, would, couldn't open his eyes anyway, you know, until about five years old or five, six years old. I wouldn't imagine I'd even be around by that time, so, <laughs> so I wouldn't have that problem. Why, why do you think you won't be around by that time? <laughs> well, I would say it could happen, you know. Yeah. I mean, I'm not counting on being around, I'm not counting on being not around, but... You just don't look ahead that far anyway. I can't look ahead that far, no. That's... This is interesting. You're, you got out of that lockstep, uh, you know, the whole education career thing. And as a result, you're a lot freer in, in many ways than a lot of people. What was it in your background and in, in how you grow, how you grew up that, uh, that let you do that? Because you well, started, I guess, like everybody. Well, where I come from is different than around here. You know, it's you can do just about anything you want. You know, it's it's more or less there's no there's no distinguishing. There's no there's no uh, lines of. Poverty, that kind of stuff. Everybody's more or less the same. All the towns are, you know, it's just a whole other thing, you know. It's not, you don't really have that much, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, nobody had that much. No, no. But still, uh, most of the people, kids you were growing up with, I'm sure went well, to Well, oh, oh, sure, sure. Uh, I just was, uh, I just, I don't know. I have no idea. My uncle is a professional gambler. I've seen him once in a while. Maybe that had something to do with it. I yeah. don't know. Uh, I don't know really what it was. I, I, I'm, you know, there are a lot of people. I'm not the only one that, that left there, traveling around like me. There's people that everybody left there. I don't know really if anybody that, that has stayed there. There's nothing really there. Everybody my age, I know, left. I don't know where they are. Once in a while I hear from people, but I don't. Uh, I know that there's nobody. Nobody stayed there to, uh, you know. So in a sense, there was an advantage in the way it was because it sort of oh, got you to leave. So my very first uh, time of consciousness, I know I wanted to get out of there. It's really, you know, everybody did. Well, you first hit the road when you were quite young. Was it about 12? Well, that's just running away, but that's just a, a thing because it not, doesn't mean too much here because it's not like hitting the road from uh, yeah. uh, New York for the West Coast or anything like that. There's the towns that are only 10 miles apart, you know, yeah. there's thousands of them, so... You can't really get too lost. It's just a, a 
thing, you know, it's running away. Everybody runs away from it. But then, I, as I remember, you went farther distances a little yeah, later but, on. Yeah, but everybody else did. It wasn't my own idea. It yeah. was a common thing to do. I think everybody ran away at least uh, once or twice in their lifetimes. You know, it's, I mean, I remember that very distinctly. Everybody did it. You know. mm -hmm. Was there anything that you learned just in the process of doing that, but, you know, not only the traveling, but in doing it and having the courage to do it? That, uh, it didn't really take much courage. It just took, you know, the uh, yeah, feeling, you know, <laughs> like, uh, let's uh, get some kicks, you know. That's yeah. about all it was. You, know, you could actually hop trains where I come from. There weren't freight trains, boxcars, or trains. But you could actually hop them and go for a ride, you know. And we've done that. So it was a kind of a, a mobile existence to start with. Yeah, well, I mean, if you know where, where, where part of the country it is, it's, it's, there's nothing there, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's not such a great thing, it really isn't. Yeah, I mean, yeah. if I was here in New York City, I probably wouldn't have done that. I probably would have turned out completely different. It's kind of Bronx High School of Science? Sure, <laughs> you know, I would have probably been a lawyer by now. If I yeah. would have stuck to, if I would have been more lucky to be born here. <laughs> but really, you know, it's nothing special. You once said uh, that you didn't want to work too often. You'd rather have most of your life and time to yourself. It seemed, in the last year, haven't, haven't the tours been increasing? And that kind yeah, of yeah, they have. I'm working now a lot because uh, I dig it now more, so it's a different thing now. I was going to quit <coughs> <coughs> when I was playing all by myself. I was, I was going to play. I was very mixed up on how long I was going to really do it, to play by myself. Uh, it's another thing altogether. I would never want to do it again. It really is a whole other thing. I, it's... Not, it's uh, See, what it comes down to is, uh, is that, uh, uh, I've written a lot of long songs, you know, and, uh, the thing about writing and recording them, that's one thing, but to get up on the stage and sing them mm -hmm. night after night, it gets a little hard, because uh, you're not really there, and you write mine, you know, half yeah. the time, and to get up there and sing all these songs, which, uh, What do you mean by not being in your right mind? Well, just being in, uh, in a mind that's, uh, it is, for well, people put it this way, like people come to the concert, they're all ready to see the concert, but uh, like you're not really ready to see them. Yeah, I, I do. You know, it's, uh, you know, it's, you can translate that in terms of, you know, somebody coming over ringing your doorbell you don't want to see, right? Like, it just happens this, this night that 3,000 people ringing your doorbell. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you travel with a group now all the time? Yeah. What, what's the name of it? Well, they're, 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 uh, they, they, we call it Levon and Hawks. How do you spell the Levon? L-E-V-O-N. Yeah. Levon, he's from Arkansas. He's a drummer. And, uh, he, he's, he's Robbie. Robbie's the lead guitar player. Mm -hmm. I've, I've known Robbie for some time. Uh, and what that comes down to is just that, you know, uh, you can't really get people to play with unless you can pay them. Yeah. And I wouldn't want to cheat anybody and tell, promise them anything. No, it doesn't cost anybody anything. I mean, it'd be foolish not to, you know, pay them, not to play with them. And, you know, it's, uh, so that's one of the reasons you're working more, huh? Yeah, it is. Also, I know what, what's happening is uh, not totally... Uh, it is... See, before I used to go to concerts. I used to play these concerts. I used to say, well, would I come to see me tonight? <laughs> and I used to have to be very truthful and say, no, I wouldn't come. I'd rather... I'd rather... Uh, do something else, I, I really would. Mm. But that was just me, you know. Now the way. So now I, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna, I would think, well, would I wanna come to hear this tonight? And I got, I gotta say, I would. I mean, having them with you increases your own enjoyment and performing. Well, no, not really. Mm. It's, uh, it's, it's another thing too. It's, uh, it's, uh, you know, it's the songs are all. Uh, they don't have any influences, you see. I mean, I know this to be true. These songs, most of them, in, you know, on the, all of them really, like on the stage now, uh, is it, what they are in being, like, it's not influenced, you know, by, it's not, a, it's not a trying to be something else kind of thing, you know, whereas a lot of stuff is, like, you can listen to a lot of records and things, and go see a lot of shows, and it wouldn't really matter who was doing it, you know. Yeah. It would, it would, uh, you know, it could, you could easily find the same thing down a block, which is all right, you know, that's how I'm putting down stuff, you know, you think it's all very good. But I know what we're doing is, is different. I don't know what exactly it is that we're doing, mm -hmm. 
I know it's different though. It's not folk rock or this kind of thing. It's if you want to be fun and is that it's that's all right too. It doesn't matter. But but I've listened to it. And I actually dig it. You know. What would you say, aside from not talking influences, but what are some of its roots, like Negro blues and country music? And well, the roots are, are they're hard, they're hard, a little bit hard to define in that. It's not, uh, it's everything really, you know, it's just a, uh, I don't know. I, I can I can at least look at the other, a lot of first songs where, like, hey, Woody Guthrie, I wrote you a song, it's definitely influenced by Woody Guthrie. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, Highway 51 on our first record was definitely influenced by Everly Brothers and, uh, you know, uh, uh, Charlie Pickett. Uh, on the second record, you can still see the influences, you know, on, uh, stuff like that. Like, uh, the first record, there was Muddy Waters influence mm -hmm. on it. But now, there, thing, but you know. now there aren't any influences, <laughs> really. No, the influences are sort of mashed up, you know, like the influence isn't in its given form anymore. The influence is, uh, I know it all now. I've known it for quite a while, you know, I know it all. I don't really play too much, you know. It's just a thing now. It's, uh, I know how to do it now. You know, I know the music, I know, I don't have to think in terms of where, what I kind of tune I want these words to, you know. It's, uh, it's more or less of a, I don't have to hold anything back now. Before I used to have to hold things back, I had to hold melodic things back. I snuck them through, yeah. but as not many people really realized it. You know, I snuck them through on my second record. It's not a very pretty melody. You know? Why did you have to hold them back? Well, I still had to make it, and I still had to, you know, survive. You know, I still had to, uh, you know. What do you mean you thought it might be too far out? Not too far out. I didn't want to really, uh, you know, uh, I didn't really want to, uh, you know, I mean, if, uh, if somebody's going to give me 350, you know, uh, you know, and if I did a certain thing which wasn't that hard for me to do, you know, I'll do it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, other, if they wouldn't give me the 350, you know, uh, you know, if I went along with what you want to call ideals, and my ideals aren't that important to me, I don't really care to have any, you know, so uh, it didn't matter. You know, like, uh, that was, I mean, that was just a certain thing, of a personal, I just yeah. transferred a personal thing to that. It wasn't really that big when I started, I was just playing, I had no idea I was going to be playing now. Mm -hmm. You know, when I started playing, I was just playing a piece of guitar, you know, easily understandable. That is, and the songs are very understandable too, I make mean, bread, you know, mm -hmm. not to scuffle. I mean, I mean if you figure if some of the songs you're, that you're doing now, where the lyrics, well, they no, no, they, they, they are in their perfect form now. They're yeah. not in their, per, you know, they're not in their form of uh, hearing it perfectly. Yeah. They're not in the form of uh, of uh, perfection, but they're in their perfect form. They're where they're supposed to be now. They're not, you know, in any kind of, you know, uh, any kind of attempt to uh, disguise anything. There, there's no, uh, it's all straight right down there. It's all, yeah. you know, no. What I meant was, do you feel if you had started with that kind of song, it might have been harder to get... Well, I did with start with that song. Yeah. I did start that way, but I couldn't make it that way. Yeah. It's impossible. It's totally impossible. It would have been total failure. You know, I didn't really think, I didn't look look, look ahead and say, well, haha, if I do it this way now, I can do it this way later. Yeah. I found it all. Yeah, right? yeah, like yeah. That. I mean, because, uh, you know, but uh, that's what it is. I mean, you know, it's, you know... Why would it have been so impossible? Well, like I say, you know, it's, uh, you have to pay everybody, you have to, you know, to have a band that makes music. And well, first of all, if you have somebody, you know, you're playing with people, you know, you're playing with people. You know, and when you don't have anything, that means you're all together, you know, everybody just doesn't hang out in their house and, you know, yeah. and you just come on over. Like, if you're going to make something, you know, uh, you really got to make it by yourself, you know, or else have it all set up for you. Well, do you think that the songs you're doing now would have been harder for large numbers of people to, to understand at the beginning? Oh, sure. Also, I couldn't have written those songs back then. Yeah, so All these stuff I could together. But I, oh, yeah, shit, if I just came out and sang Desolation Road five years ago, man, I probably would have been murdered. <laughs> <laughs> how, did, how did you feel like a new poet and a forest hills when some of the, let's say, the old audience, or they thought they were the old audience, 
got so upset at hearing the, the electric guitar and, and all that and the well, and I, kind of I think it was a little blue in all of us, you know. <laughs> and, uh, you know, like, uh, you know, if they had a good time, you know, like, uh, what can I say? You know, what can I say if they had a good time booing? I mean, there's just nothing I can say. Then yeah. I, I feel happy about it. I mean, if they didn't have a good time booing, I gotta, I gotta think something's wrong somewhere. Uh, you know, like, first of all, when you say old fans, I know they're not my old fans of Boot. Mm -hmm. I know they're not my old fans. They can see themselves probably as my old fans, but old fans, really. You know, old fans are people that, that are like, we're in that, we're in that, uh, you know, 1,228 people that bought my first record. That's <laughs> 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 so old fan. Yeah. You know, old fans are, are the, you know, the 67 people that came into Greece, you know. Yeah. You know, are the people who've done the guests. They're the old fans. You know, the people that were at the, you know, just hung around on the east side, you know, and it's in the state of the apartments. People I don't even see anymore. People I haven't seen who thought, you know, I had it made uh, on my, you know, second record. Yeah. You know, like, they say, okay, Dylan's got it made, you know, and, and that's it. Well, I'm on the second record. That's that's what success meant then. Yeah. You know, when I made my second How record. How come they don't see you or you don't see them anymore? I have no idea where they are. Yeah. You know, it's just scattered. I, I hear from them, too, once in a while. Yeah. I, I, I... I don't know, you know, I see them once in a while, they're scattered all over, they really are. Have you heard that thing Murray the Kay has been saying in the air? It goes in kind of, kind of poem that I can't remember, but the idea is the people who boo Dylan are as prejudiced as the KKK. I, I believe that. <laughs> <laughs> By all means. <laughs> um, are you all ever concerned about the fact that now that you're making it in a lot, you know, the, the way most people talk about making it, a lot of bread and uh, all that stuff, it would be a lot difficult to not to be tempted to keep on being popular. In other words, to stop well, going your own way. Yeah, there's always that temptation, but you know, I, I just know too well, you know, that it's just gonna, you know, it's it's just now, you know, it's not, it's not. Uh, I refuse to be any kind of friend you know, of Lawrence Welk or something like that. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know what else I can do. I'll continue making the records. They're not going to be any better from now on. They're going to be just different, that's all. And this was the last record I made was, uh, I, I can't imagine them. Whereas when I made my last record before this, I still knew what I wanted to do in my next record. I knew what I'm going to do in the next record, but it's, I know it's going to be the same kind of thing, just a little different. How can you be so sure it's not going to be better, that you're not going to find something that's uh, beyond? Because on well, this last record, it's just too good. There's a lot of stuff on there which, I mean, I, I, What's I would listen to. What's the title of that to. one? Uh, Highway 61. Highway 61. Revisited, yeah. Um, you don't call what's hap what you're doing now folk rock, but how did you get move in that direction? You know, bringing in the electric instruments, having that kind of rhythm, that kind of bass. Well, I've always done it. Even you know, it was there on the second record for mm -hmm. one session, if you remember. Yeah. And the reason it wasn't done anymore is because I d I just couldn't have didn't have the bread to pay anybody else to come in. Mm -hmm. We just did it for that one session. I would, I didn't want to pay anybody else. So it's not so new at all. I mean, no, it's not new in my mind. It's new in a lot of other people's yeah. mind, but I guess it's not new in my mind. What's your reaction? I, th I think now of uh, Erwin Silver. I, I, to me, it's an idiotic position, but it's it's taken. Uh, Dylan isn't singing the pro protest songs anymore. That must mean he's uh, he's sold out. That kind of jazz. Well, that's his problem, you know. It's it's it's. It, I have really no reaction to it at all. It's mm -hmm. it's just a. Uh, you know, it's 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 all the other thing. It's it's. I'm glad that he's. I mean, if he's happy, <laughs> you know, I uh, wish him the best. But uh, he can, you know. I don't care. It doesn't matter what they say about me. It really doesn't. I mean, if anybody, if anybody could really understand that, uh, you know, as soon as uh, as uh, as long as they're troubled about me, I'm going to be around. You know, <laughs> as soon as everything gets straight. You know. Would you elaborate on that a bit? <laughs> Well, as soon as they, you know, start to, you know, I don't even know what they say, you know, I really don't know the, the ridiculous things they say, I know, I know some of the things I do wrong, you know, I do a couple things wrong, once in a while I do something really wrong, you know, which I really can't see when I'm involved in it, and then after a while I look at it later, I, I know it's wrong, I don't say nothing about it, it's got nothing to do with music, though, yeah. you know, um, you know, like, that kind of thing, and, it's the only thing that means anything to me what I do is wrong, you know, and, but this thing about, you know, I'm not singing protest songs, this is, this, uh, you know, how many, you know, I don't want to do that, you know, that's, I have absolutely no contact with that. Yeah. Um, I, I have no respect for, for anything that, you know, 
they stand for it to begin with, you know. Uh, it's in, and not in terms of that, but in terms of uh, not in terms of, not only for them personally, but like I have, I have no respect for for the uh, conversation on on, on uh, you know on, on, on you know what if somebody got something to say, you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, I just don't have any respect for it. I think it's vulgar, obscene, you know, this, the idea of somebody having something to say. A message. A message. Yeah, thing, yeah. Uh, uh, it's, uh... Then again, you know, like we have the literary world or whatever have you, the museum types and uh, this kind of thing, which is also I have no respect for. You know, I, I just I just can't make it. You know, it's just a total you know, thing which I just can't see. Uh, in my mind, you know, if something is, uh, you know, artistic or valid or groovy or, 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 you know, nice to be with, it should be out in the open, you know, it should be, you know, in men's room, and it should be, you know, places like that. It, it, uh, you recorded a saying, like, <coughs> what you have in the museums <coughs> and what are in the books now really have no relationship to what's happening, to what's real. And well, it never has, you know. Yeah. It, it never, it, ne- it never really has. I mean, I don't see how it could. Uh, I really don't understand. You know, uh, I'm not involved in that side of it. But uh, see, the sing out world just overlaps into that kind of world. Yeah. Where, whereas that, that is really why I can't really pay too much attention to it. It's just a stagnation thing of putting books on the shelf. You know, like, uh, like, you, like once you read a book, you know, you just put it on the shelf, and there it is. You know. If you want to buy a painting, then you gotta go out and pay a lot of money for a painting. You want to see paintings, you know, you gotta pay. You know, you gotta pay to go to the museum. If you want to, you know, see dancing, then you have to go to. You have to mix with these theatrical people. You, go, you want to see a play? Look, look who, look at people you have to sit next to if you want to go see a Broadway play. Right, you know, like uh, look at all this stuff, which is really, in terms of just, you know, like no, nobody with you know a dollar ninety eight can go out and have anything to do with it. Yeah. You know, it's like. Uh, I think a person's more lucky if they can buy a car, man, buy a car with a radio. They're mm-hmm. much better off than if they have, you know, it's straining to go see all these Broadway plays and, and museums and stuff. It's, you know, it's because the same thing is on the radio. Yeah, I, I remember you being quoted as saying that it's on the radio and on records that you get a sense of what's happening. Well, it's not a sense of what's happening. It's like the things now, I don't know if you know, you know, the Motown Music Company. Yeah, yeah, I get all their records. Well, you know, just like to listen to one of those records, you know, like, like, granted, like, the men all sound the same and stuff like that, but that's like, uh, listening to one of those records, I mean, if you can't, uh, you know, if you can't, if you can't understand the whole total, uh, the whole total thing, you know, on, on, uh, on, on what it's all about, you know, well, then, then you got to go to plenty of museums, man, <laughs> you're really, you know, you gotta go to the museum, drink a lot of coffee, and uh, wear a banana, man. <laughs> you know. Somebody was saying, though, he said he started to play some of those Motown records at a very slow speed, and he said he was, quote, shocked, unquote, because some of those lyrics were very, uh, what was the word, lewd. Does that bother you at all? I don't think they're lewd on Motown. Yeah. They're, they're, they're usually, they're just not lewd. Say, I've had many stuff, I've had stuff banned for me, you know, for being lewd. Yeah. Like, it all depends on which thing is lewd. Yeah. You know, lewd. How would you define it? Is, 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 is the name of the person lewd? John Lewd. <laughs> I know John Lewd. Is there anything in words that, well, you know, like Lenny Bruce will say, there's nothing in a word that can be bad, which is just a word. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I don't see how anything can, you know, I don't, I'm not afraid of words. I mean, maybe a lot of people are afraid of words, but that's, you know, that's who you're dealing with. Yeah. People are afraid of words, that's, a lot of people are afraid of words. Well, you know, you know that's 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 a shame. That's worse than being frightened of a dog. You know? <laughs> that's, that line's gonna last. Um, you and McCall had a thing where he said that you were so eager to get immediate success, you deliberately wrote down to your audience, and you said you avoided during the protest song period. You avoided basic issues because you had no real anger. Your passion was manufactured. Oh. Who's Ian McCall? He's that Scottish actor and folk oh. singer, you know. Is he famous? <laughs> in, in Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know, you know, like, uh, 
I was never written down to anybody. Yeah. You know, I certainly, uh, uh, if he says I wasn't angry, you know, I never met him really. I don't know what, what he does for a living, you know. Is he, uh... He plays clubs in London and he uh, records, that kind of thing. Is, is, is he famous? Uh, among the real <laughs> hardcore folk people. Well, he's probably a little bit angry, you know, that he's not really famous, you know, <laughs> really famous, but, you know, <laughs> you know, you know, I certainly can't tell. I certainly, he's not, it's, I don't even know the fellow, I can't really comment on it. I'm sure he's got good intentions, but... Yeah. <clears throat> Do you ever feel a weight at all at the fact that there are all these kids who, who uh, you know, they don't even listen to the records, but it's almost like some of them try to absorb as much of what they think is going on in those records as possible. And if they don't make you a model, they're, they're certainly being very influenced by what they think is you. Does that ever... Well, I think it's a good thing. Some think I, I know that, you know... First of all, what do you mean? What do you mean? Like, well, I, I know uh, uh, kids starting 12 up, and they say that uh, this, is, th this guy is... Nobody manipulates him. He goes his own way and that kind of thing. Yeah, well... That's right, but they can't very well do it at 12. Yeah. <laughs> but do you feel any responsibility in that sense? No, or? no, I have no responsibility in that sense. The music just says what it says, it's, and that's it's, it. It's the music, yeah. yeah. I'm certainly not going to tell them to go out and do anything vulgar. You know, it's... I have no responsibility towards the fans, you know. They're, 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 they're big grown-up people. You were saying that a message, a message song is, is vulgar. Using message in another sense, though, so far as you could put it into words, what is it you're trying to say through through the songs you're doing now? Well, so I'm not trying to say anything anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, like, uh, once upon a time I tried to say, well, I'm here, listen to me. Mm -hmm. You know, once upon a time I tried to say, I'm here, I need some bread, you know, <laughs> and uh, and uh, I, wanna, I want to, uh, you know... Uh, once in a while, you know, I want, will you let me stay at your house tonight? You know, that's really what it boils down to. Yeah. You know. I, mean, I don't have to say that anymore. You know, and uh, now, it's just letting, you know, the songs are just somebody else is hearing them. That's all it is. It's like, if they'd be there, if anybody listened to them or not. You know, uh, they're not manufactured songs. They, they don't, you know, they would be there, you know. They, they exist. And whoever listens to them, that's none of my business. And what they get you know, out of it is none of their business either. None of my business either, you yeah. know. It's, uh, I know what they are, you know. Uh, but I can't, I can't, I can't tell somebody what they are, you know. Nor can you tell anybody how to react to them or what they're supposed no. to get out of them. Um, how do you account for the, because it's not just a passing thing, at least not in terms of a three or four years of, the, of this great attraction you, you do have for more and more young people. You know, I, I go... Well, young people are really... Young people are, have... They don't want to have free minds, you know. They want to be... Uh, they want to, because, you know, uh, they're young, you know. Whereas people once, you know, like once they get out of college or go to college, they get involved in their lifetime thing. And they really don't have time to, to be, uh, you know, they, they sort of really know that, you know, it's all kind of useless and, uh, you know, uh, they, they can't really make such a big fuss over somebody. You know, they can't really plan to go see a concert, you know, months ahead of time. They, you know, things don't have the same attraction for them. I and mean, they have to put it out of their minds, you know, like they have, they have to look down on a lot of things, you know, because it makes them feel better. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Uh, whereas kids, you know, the kids don't have to think like that. They're, they're all, they're all, you know, home and, uh, they want to get out, you know. They still, it's still a other thing to them. Do you have any expectation that the kids listening to you now and, and being moved by what, what they hear, that some of them anyway may be somewhat different, that they won't get trapped in that kind of adult box and that maybe you've helped not getting them trapped? No, I don't think so. Yeah, I had started to ask about um, whether you thought there was any hope that at least some of them, the kids now, particularly those listening to you, might not get into that adult box, and, and maybe if they don't, one of the reasons is the kind of stimulus you gave them. 
No, but it's 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 not in my mind now. My my way of thinking. I don't really. I I, I don't think in terms of 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 uh, the people that listen to me. You know, mm -hmm. I don't think in terms of the records of who buys the records. You know, like when it comes, you know, time. It's it's all in terms of what ha what's happening here around here. It's you know a total other world than than uh, than a teenage market. I'm not gonna fall for for being any kind of spokesman for them or, or trying to teach them anything because it'd be kind of silly you know it's 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 uh it's it's a whole other thing uh if it, if it happens that way you know then fine but it's it's you're not out to save them <laughs> no no i well, certainly wouldn't run over them on the street or anything <laughs> you know or, or if somebody you know, needs that so we needed a mouthful of water, I'd probably, you know. But you can't, you can't uh, save their souls for them. No, I can't save their souls. I can't. Uh, <laughs> I can't save their souls. No. <laughs> there's a there was a quote in a Newsweek piece where you said, uh, "I've never written a political song. Songs can't save the world. I've gone through all that. When you don't like something, you got to learn to just not need that something." Is there anything yeah. to add to that? No. That's, that's pretty much what you feel. Yeah. And then the idea that, you know, like the Pete Seeger idea that you can change men's hearts and that it's sort of thing. It's not true at all. Yeah. Can anything? I mean, do you have any hope that there might be a new society, is, to use that kind of old terms? I don't know. No, I don't, you know, I don't know. I, I don't even think in terms of society. Uh, you know, it's a... Uh, Society, you know, fights among itself. You know, mm -hmm. all societies do, I guess. And uh, I'm not really part of any society like that. I don't really know. You know. I know the early write-ups used to say, "Well, here's Dylan. He's a social critic. He's showing us the hypocrisy in American life and all." And the yeah, but see, it was really valid. They could say that very easily about me. Mm -hmm. You see, it doesn't take much, you know, balls to say that. You know, or to write me up like that, because yeah. in fact, like it's very easy to see, I wasn't even a part of the society, mm -hmm. their society. You know, they could come around and see the concerts and write stories about me and see me at a party or something. But, but it's very easy for say here's he's condemning the society when I wasn't a part of that society. It's very easy, you know, for to, for, to somebody to for somebody to get kicked by somebody who's not a part of that society. Now let's say somebody like you know, General McNamara. Mm -hmm. He starts criticizing the society. Now they're going to take. Now they're going to start worrying about it a little bit. But nobody has to worry about anybody from the outside, that's very evidently on the outside, criticizing their society because he is on the outside, and you know he's not in it anyway. And so they can just keep themselves happy, you know, and and, and think that something you know is, is you know, romanticize things, but it's not true at all. Do you or did you consider yourself from the outside a social critic, or was just no, no, I wasn't really a social critic. It was just like, uh, you know, it's like, uh, um, it's like I knew where, where, to, where to put the song. You know, I knew where the slot was. You know, that's all. No more to it than that. Yeah. Speaking of being outside the society, one of the things that, that Joan is doing is herself and trying to get other people not to pay income tax as a way of protesting foreign policy. What's your view of that kind of? criticism of the society from the outside well she doesn't live in a society you know you can't you know you, you can't you can't go around criticizing things you're not a part of you know like if that's no way to make something better mm -hmm. you know uh, I'm sure you know that she's you know got a very good point there you know, keeping not paying her money to the you know, tax department uh, but if that's some, if that's more uh, if that's a question, like, you know, am I going to do it, you know, I'm not going to do it, you know, I'm going to pay, I'm not going to get in trouble with those people, yeah. you know, I'm, I don't, you know, I, I mean, I, I live here, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be, you know, I wouldn't have what I have, really, in this country, unless it was this country, I wouldn't have it in another, another country, uh, I'm not, you know, going to go along with them, I'm not going to go along with anything they do, I'm just not going to be a part of a lot of these things which they do, that's all, yeah. but, but that's not, I'm not, I'm not trying to wave any flag. That's just me, you mm -hmm. know. You know, if I was going to, you know, not pay my income tax, that means first thing, all the papers are going to come up and they're going to say Bob Dylan doesn't pay his income tax. You know, and it's, you know, it's like, uh, 
You know, what's, what good is that going to do? I mean, they don't need my money. It's just a form of, you know, saying what you do. That's all. It's not going to make a dent or anything. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, you know, if somebody doesn't want to wants to pay their income tax, I figure it's <coughs> fine. If somebody doesn't want to pay their income tax, that's fine too. Yeah. You know, I'm sure you don't condemn anybody that doesn't pay their income tax. Yeah. I mean, most people don't really pay their rightful income tax. You know, <laughs> it's true. Like, uh, <laughs> you know, to come out, I, I think it's kind of kind of a bad point to come out and stress it because it's going to be hard on a lot of other people who yeah. really don't pay a lot of their income tax. You mean there's people are going to start looking more closely yeah. at all them? Yeah. 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 Uh, another thing, and this is Squirrelville, but people who say, "Well, isn't Dylan in a sense playing a role?" Because He's not a, a country guy or whatever, but the, the dress is, is informal and, and to, uh, let's say, the Columbia record context, it's, uh, if not bizarre, at least, you know, very distinctive. And is, is that a kind of a stance or just more comfortable? Well, it's just clothes I wear. You know, yeah. that's, that's something that's <laughs> I certainly don't. Hey, I dressed in blue jeans for a long time, right? You know, yeah. I dressed in shirts and clothes, and everybody says, look how funky he looks. You know, yeah. I made a big point out of it. Well, you know, like, uh, it doesn't take much uh, thinking, with, you know, like, I didn't really have many clothes, you know, back yeah. when I played on, back, you know, I didn't really have many clothes, I didn't even know what clothes were, you know, like, now I'm not going to walk around like I used to walk around, and I got money to buy better clothes now, mm -hmm. why should I walk around like, uh, you know, like a clown, I look like a normal person now, yeah. I don't want to look like... <laughs> But also, you're not going to go for Brooks Brothers or whatever, because that's not yours. Your, your well, style. I said I don't like that style, no. Yeah. I mean, I don't like that Ivy League style, no. I don't like that. Um, what about the, the feeling among some people that you become, in, your, in, in a way, your own kind of establishment, you know, surrounded by people kind of uh, hard to get to? And does this jibe with, you know, the feeling that you're talking about everybody being egalitarian and, and, all, and no pomp, you know, no... I'm not talking about anybody. That's, yeah. that's their own paranoia. Ah. <laughs> you don't feel that you've become that, uh, that much of like the old movie star thing with the uh, hangers on and Sinatra. Oh, I haven't got you. Hangers on. Yeah. Stuff like that. Getting back to the, the look thing again, I, like Sonny and Sure, do you, is there any significance, do you think, to the long hair business and the, all that? No, there's not really that much significance. It's just, it's just uh, either you like to, you know, wear your hair a certain way, or you don't. You know, it's certainly infested a lot of minds with, you know, <laughs> with, with trouble. But you know, I really see no reason for it. You don't think anybody's trying to prove anything? That way. No, no, it's not that thing at all. Well, I must admit, it looked pretty incredible at first when you see, uh, uh, you know. I mean, if you've ever been to England and see people, and people just look a whole other way over there, you know. Yeah. And they really look like uh, their ancestors, or whoever, the Prince Valiant, you know, all kinds of weird <laughs> people. Over here, they don't, there's nothing, no, you can't even compare it to what they look over there. They had a thing in some magazine a while back showing the long hair. So long hair, first in the United States, mm -hmm. group, and they showed, where they showed Beach Boys kind of people. It's, hair that comes down a little bit, you know, on the back of their neck, and then yeah. they show some kids in Chicago rebelling who have their, you know, their hair coming down a little bit on their forehead a little bit, yeah. and somebody else, you know, in, um, in Hollywood, California was a little bit of over their ear, and it show, you know, and uh, then the last day they show a picture outside of a pub in England, you know, with kids that were about 17, 18 years old, were just standing around, and just no comparison in terms of people, man, like, they just... I mean, you can tell that they they didn't have any, that was they they didn't worry about long hair, you know. It's not rebellion or anything like no, that. No, no, it's not a rebellion kind of thing. It's uh, yeah. it's just a, a another way of kind of thing, which I don't know. I guess most people can't really see themselves doing. You know, it's a uh, it's an attitude, I guess. You know, the attitude being that uh, attitude of you know of, of why not, you know. Yeah, that's it. Why not? It's, it's like I get asked once a week, why you got a beard? Why not? Um, this why not thing, do you feel that among the, the younger generation, there maybe is becoming more freedom? Like, for example, the, the kid, more and more of the younger people using pot or, or, or LSD or, 
being a lot clearer about see, sex. Well, I, I don't really know that many of the younger people. Yeah. You know, like that's that really is. That's fine to use pot and LSD and heroin and sex and everything. I mean, that's groovy. But I mean, like I don't really know any of them. You know. Mm -hmm. uh, um, you speak of young people, I mean, you know, kids in high school and stuff like that. Yeah. I don't. I don't. Anyway, I don't. I don't really. Uh, I really have no contact with them you know, directly. You know, I don't. I don't. I read about them in the papers. Yeah. You know, but I don't really. From what you read, does it? Do you think that that gives, gives some hope that there'll be a again when they grow up they'll be less hung up with conformity and oh, less yeah. safe? Yeah, but what it comes down to now is that somebody learns something so fast by the time they're 21 they know that it's all bullshit. You know, yeah. and and uh, you get to really. Think of something to do. But, you, know. you mean the thing like pot or LSD just isn't going to be that? Yeah, much well, most people like you know like you get to it like uh, a lot of people get turned on when they're 45 and they realize what a waste everything's been. I know some people like that. You know, yeah. they're really, really you know. I mean, they're happy that they, they kind of really know a few things, but like they really, you know, they really go. So we say go with pot, you know, yeah. like they quit their jobs and they, they just sit around the house and laugh. <laughs> this is what pot you mean? And I mean, no, I mean, people that really sort of understand that at 45 that they've just been really hung up their whole life, you know. Yeah. So but that's the to think about if your chick is with somebody else, man, if, uh, you know, it's, it's just the world is filled with too many people, you know. And if, and, uh, but by turned on, you don't mean to anything, just to a well, realization, just to a realization of, of things, yeah. you know. There's many thousands of ways to realize things. You know, they have even groups across the country. They have self-realization groups yeah. that you can become kind of a part of. Yeah, and, the, and there's no guarantee that if you try pot, that's going to turn you into any kind of realization of, uh, of all. Yeah, well, I guess everybody smokes pot. I mean, pot is like sort of behind the times now. You know, it's like uh, to get busted for pot is just is kind of like uh, it's not really. It doesn't really make much of a statue anymore. <laughs> what, what does LSD? I mean, nothing really get busted for any of that stuff. It's just, uh, it's kind of like, uh, it's uh, just a sign of very uncoolness, you know, unless they plant it on you or something. You were saying that if the kids now, they learn it so fast that by 21, it, it really has no meaning anymore. In the sense of what? That they realize that that too doesn't well, give any answers. They realize that it's really a drag to, to uh, plan for tomorrow their whole life. Yeah. And realizing in terms of really hard reality that tomorrow never comes. Like you, can, you always wake up and it's today. Yeah. You know, like tomorrow just never seems to come. And, uh, you know, and there is no yesterday. Yeah. So, so what's left is just, you know, a nothing. Or but, li or but live in the present. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, you know, I know a lot of people know this. I I know a lot of people know this. I didn't know this really. So you know, I went to, when I was you know, 16, 17. But a lot of people know it now. A lot of people at 16 really know now that uh, you know the communication is so great. You know, mm. the communication of t TV you know, and, and radio. And, and letters can get across the country fast, and telephones, and it's like, there's no reason for anybody not knowing anything, really, by the time they're that age. And yeah. a lot of people don't. You know, a lot of people, are, you know... By knowing anything, you mean knowing, again, that it's all well, in the presence? Well, now it's all in presence, like, to, to know pot, you know, or to know any drug is, 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 is uh, to, know, to know any drug is fine, and it's not going to fuck you up, you know. I mean, that, that's one thing. Mm -hmm. But to know it in terms of not saying anything about it, that's another thing. Yeah. You know, anybody, you know, they smoke you know, pot, you remember smoking pot the first time in Whoopi, and you got to tell your friends, yeah. man, this kind of stuff. I mean, that's not really, you know, so great or anything like that. You know, uh... It's like what counts is not whether whatever it is you're using or not using, it, but it, again, it, that it, realization it, about the futility of planning for tomorrow. Yeah, the thing is, like, it doesn't even matter, you know, like, uh, if, uh, you know, it's, it's a silly thing to even, uh, to discuss them. I mean, you see lectures all the time in the Village Voice, lectures <laughs> on everything, yeah. you know, absolutely everything. They talk about, you know, the relationship of Gandhi to, uh, 
you know, to pipe tobacco, man, you know, and, and, and I'm sure they're going to get a hall filled, you know. Yeah. And see reasons for the, you know, reasons for the, the coming of the camel. And, you know, like uh, there's thousands of people there that are going to go see it. And they, of course, they all wear glasses, you know, and, uh, you know, and uh, this is not really a valid world. This is, a, you know, this is a, this is a you know, it's very, what are you going to call it? I don't know. It's often called intellectual kind of world. It's, yeah. uh, it's, it's boring, you know. It really yeah. is boring. They don't do anything. Then I know some of the kids uh, in Students for, for Democratic Society, you know, are working in the, in the ghettos, and they say, well, the kids who figure they have the answer through pot or whatever are really running away from everything. Well, I never saw if they have the answer to pot and all this kind of, I don't want to make this kind of drug interview or anything. Yeah. Like LSD, like uh, once you take LSD a few times, you know, I mean LSD is, uh, LSD is a medicine. You know, like you take it, you take it, and you know, you know, you know, you don't really have to keep taking it all the time. It's nothing like that. It's not that kind of thing. You know, it's, you know, whereas pot, you know, I know we got any answers to pot. Pot is, you know, that's not that kind of thing. Mm. Or I'm sure the people that say people, the people that say that the people who figure they got the answers through pot, you know, first of all, the people who say that, that they're just inventing something, and, and and the people that think they really actually think they got their answers through pot probably never even smoke pot. You know, <laughs> I mean, it's like it, yeah. pot is, is, is you know who's, who smokes pot anymore anyway? You know, pot is. It's getting back to music. Uh, you were saying that you like the early Presley. I wondered about somebody like Johnny Cash now. How does he affect you? Because he's a guy uh, that said that's, that's a very funny thing to have. <laughs> yeah. I, it's, I, I can't really, really talk about it too much. It's, I like Johnny Cash a lot. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I like everything he does, really. Yeah, I've just begun to, to pick up on him. And his early records were much better, I think, than his latest records. Yeah. Although he's written some fantastic things. I mean, he's really written some great things. He wrote a rewrite of Frankie and Johnny. Did you ever hear that? No. That's better, than, much better than even the traditional version. He wrote, he wrote Big River and all those songs yeah. like that. What about, uh, you know, the Rolling Stones and the Animals? How, how strongly do you react to them? What they're uh, writing and singing? They just, the Rolling Stones just recently began to write. I don't think the Animals have written anything. Yeah. Uh, well, I don't know. I don't think the Rolling Stones consider themselves writers or anything. How about the music itself? Music is just hard, you know, straight music. It's. Uh, Do you dig it? Do I personally dig it? Yeah. Well, I, I, you know, I would. Uh, yeah, I dig some of it. Mm -hmm. I, I dig. Uh, I dig some of it. Some of the Rolling Stones music. I dig some of the Animals music. And the Beatles, and you've got to see them, I guess, fairly often. In fact, I read somewhere George Harrison said he said what you did mostly was laugh all night. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. What kind of communications going on there? Oh, uh, no, there's you know, communi there's I don't know about communication. It's just uh, let me put this. You know, I could just laugh all night. That's yeah. about about all. How do you feel about the Lennon and McCartney as writers, because some of the jazz guys are finally finding that their tunes are pretty interesting. Oh, their tunes are, are yeah, their tunes are really are good. Uh, yeah, they're, they're all right. How would you, uh, now I'm going to ask you to be like a musicologist, but where do all these things fit in? Where's the mainstream in terms of, you know, country and western rhythm and blues, bluegrass, all that? How do you see it all in, in, in some kind of perspective, or does it matter? Uh, it doesn't really matter, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, I, 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 I don't really think about it, you know. Uh, I don't, what does that mean, mainstream? I don't know. Well, I never do. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> that puts them in a whole other light. Yeah. <laughs> well, I certainly wouldn't know. <laughs> I have no idea. That stuff, too, is, is just irrelevant. It depends, yeah. it depends on how it sounds. One thing that uh, one thing I wanted to ask about jazz, which seems to have lost the, the kids entirely, 
uh, you appeal to them, the Beatles do, the Stones, the Righteous Brothers, but jazz seems to have gone and passed the young almost all the, all the way. Why is that? Well, j jazz is, uh, I mean, at least, I don't know what you mean by jazz, you know, like well, modern, the modern yeah, jazz I kind of thing. Yeah, I'll say, or Thelonious Monk, <laughs> that kind of thing. Well, I don't know, it's more like a, a little room kind of thing, you, you know, I would think. I've, I've, this isn't, you got to take the full trip. I mean, you can't just come in, you know, in the middle of a song or mm -hmm. and get excited, you know. You got to start from the beginning and you got to be ready. It's like you got to sit down there and you got to say, okay, I'm going to read this now, you know. It's... It's music, you know, it's, uh, a lot of people really aren't equipped to uh, deal with uh, uh, sounds, you know, in such a, a way that uh, they, ha they have no, they can't see any lead, they can't seem to follow, mm -hmm. they, whereas they can only follow straight chords, they don't want to follow anything else, you know, they don't care how far out it is, as long as they can follow it in some kind of way, like a lot of the jazz, you just can't follow, mm -hmm. I mean, you can, you know, if you sit down and just take it from the beginning and, and and do that, but uh, I mean that's a whole that's hard. That's that's work. Yeah. You know, like, who really wants to do that? You know. What about what, do you figure your songs are at all work? Like the images. No, no, no. It was, it, oh, well, that might be work, but like they're all easy to follow. Yeah, music. You know, yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I mean, they're all easy to follow. I know because because I can follow them. Yeah. You know, I can't. Find, and if <laughs> I can follow them, anybody can follow. <laughs> them, you know. Uh, you you're through the protest thing, you know. What's your reaction to this growing thing of, you know, like Eve of Destruction? Somebody like P.S. Sloan who says uh, what he, his inspiration comes from being bugged most of the time. You think this is a passing thing? Yeah, yeah. that's passing. That'll yeah, just go so long. That, that protest thing, it'll, you know, yeah, Eve of Destruction, you know, it's, uh, it's nice, you know, it's good that stuff like that is being on the radio, but uh, it's... I, I don't know what it means. I mean, you know, uh, it's it's protest music. It protest music is we we've been playing protest music this been that in New York for five years. Mm -hmm. That comes from California. That's the whole California thing now. Which when California gets hit to something, like they really go they go all out, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, but uh, what do you think it's gonna fade away? Well, because people are just going to get tired of it. You know, mm -hmm. they get tired of anything. They don't want to hear stuff all the time, you know, protesting all the time. I mean, you know. Do you think the kids who buy the records like Eve of Destruction buy it because they agree with what the guy is saying? No, I think that was a good song. That was that was hard. That was that was exciting. But that, was, that was the, the uh, you know, hey, you get sick of it, too. Hey, you need to get sick of I Got You, Babe. You know, you get sick of, uh, you, know, you get sick of, uh, you get sick of anything, right? you know, yeah. anything you're going to get sick of, doesn't but, matter what it is. But I mean, some of those, the other songs that aren't as good musically as Eve of Destruction, do you think the kids are digging the message, or is it just part of a fan? Yeah, thing? well, it, it was, it's better to have them buying those things, I guess, than thinking about something, but, uh, you know, like, don't step on my blue suede shoes. Yeah. Like Carl Perkins, and you know, like there's no comparison, and which is better? You know, absolutely no comparison. Mm -hmm. You know, like don't step on my blue suede shoes, sung by Carl Perkins. You know, uh, is uh, you know, that's really, you know, uh, more uh, more listenable. You know. Or you can see more in that, or I can, you know, and yeah. I could in easily even destruction. Only just because my mind works that way. A lot of people, you know, can't really see as much in that, you know. We started off talking about, you know, people like Cole Porter and Gershwin. Do you think it's accurate to say that what's happening now on records is a lot closer to reality than the Porter, Vincent Newman things, which was really kind of for a small group of sophisticates living pretty well? Well, that's the same way as everybody. That's even all the even all the poetry books, you know, even even all I mean, all the books, even all the all the intellectual books, you know, just appeal to a small group of people. Yeah. You know, even you know T. S. Eliot, you know, Robert Frost, uh, you know Ezra Pound, you know, all you know, all of those people, you know, uh, 
even people, you know, like Kirk, you know, John Janae, you yeah. know, they, they're all just a appeal to a certain crowd of people, you know, and, and, and nobody else really, uh, you know, they only sell, you know, a certain amount of books, and they sell them to people who are just going to talk among themselves about it, but they don't really get out into places where the people who don't really know each other uh, can, you know, yeah, all of a sudden us swarms over by, you know. Yeah. Well, what would happen, you know, if the United States was just, uh, all of a sudden Ulysses came on the radio one day, you know, <laughs> or, 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 what would happen, you know, if it was just on the top 40 radio station, yeah. uh, what would happen if they played, you know, uh, the movie, uh, We Are All Murderers, man, on Double Bill with an Elvis Presley flick, yeah. but it just don't happen, you know. What would happen? Well, I don't know, but it actually, I mean, that's, you know, like, why not, why not yeah. do it, yeah. you know. Well, I play, you know, uh, those kind of things together. But uh, so anyway, uh, that's why Ralph Gleason keeps writing that what what's hap what has happened is that popular music has become democratized for the first time. You've got Negro influences and country influences and and songs that mean something to the kids. You think that's a fair phrase? Yeah, but then again, you know, like I really have no contact with the kids. Yeah. I, I, I w what I'm doing is is. Uh, Somebody just is watching, you know, and listening. I, I would do it, you know, you know, if they didn't. I've always done it, and uh, it's that kind of thing, you know. Uh, do you have any contact with the the kid dance, you know, the new dances like the, no. the dog and the frog? No, I have no contact with that. Yeah. Oh, we go in a lot of times. We go to clubs, some of the clubs, and they dance, but I have no contact with those kind of dances. You know. Yeah, they also said that. Teenagers uh, all talk a different language. I have made me a teenager. I have no recollection of being a teenager. You know, I told the guy, name me a teenager. You know, name yeah. me one teenager that was a teenager, and we couldn't do it. You know? Yeah. <laughs> name me a teenager. I mean, who knows a teenager? You know, it's like uh, you know. I asked him what he meant by teenager, and I said, name me a teenager. Who do you mean when you speak of the word teenager? Yeah. You know, you're sort of insulting a lot of people there. And like, who really do you mean? You know. And he, he just couldn't think of anybody that he wanted to insult. So he didn't, uh, <laughs> and when you said that you won't re recollect being one, that means that when you were 15 or 16, you were Bob Dylan at 15 or 16. Right, I wasn't a teenager. You know? Yeah. <laughs> then, of course, you're talking about enemies. They can crush you, they can kill you, and lay out in 42nd Street and put the hoses on you. Who, who, are, who do you figure are your enemies? The enemies? Yeah. Uh, the enemies are those people that can crush you and... and <laughs> Send you to Forty Second Street, that kind of stuff. I, I, mean, I don't know. The enemies can, can be, you know, the enemies are so. Uh, the enemies, I don't really don't even know any enemies, but you know, there's just a lot of people sh we show without a better name can be referred to as enemies. You know. How would you characterize them? I mean, what? Well, they usually have. Uh, usually have acid coming out of their ears. <laughs> you know. And, uh, let me see. Yeah, but, but do you, do you yourself feel that, uh, in any specific sense, you have enemies either in, in music or whatever? Anybody no, no I, guess there, I guess there are a lot of people that want to, you know, see me uh, done away with, you know. And, Why? Uh, you know, well, well, the obvious reason is because there are people that want to see anybody done away with, you know. But, uh, I mean, I, don't, I can't really think of in terms of <coughs> that kind of thing, you know. Yeah. The thing you said to Shelton was, what I write is much more concise now than before. It's not deceiving. What did you mean by deceiving? Well, de deceiving means that, like, uh, like when I wrote these songs, like, you know, a lot of those songs I wrote before, they were written, you know, in a, within a small small circle of people. You mean like Masters them. of War? Or yeah, there was a more. small circle yeah. of people that heard them, you know. And uh, when, some, when they were brought finally to the outside, there's somebody else who heard them just weren't equipped really to take it and know it, you know, the same way, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's like, uh, I mean, deceiving is like straightforward, blunt, uh, kind of thing, and where somebody else could possibly think that, uh, you know, something is happening which isn't happening. Yeah. It's like, uh, I, I don't, uh, I can't even remember back then. I can remember in little rooms, you know, writing those things, but I also remember I was right I took the time out to write those things. The other stuff I was doing didn't even resemble those songs at all. 
the reason I'm more what I'm writing today in terms of songs, you know, yeah. which I wouldn't consider writing in terms of songs because I know nobody could, you know. Yeah. How would you s explain the difference, although it's there to hear, but I mean, if you wanted to put it into words. Between Be then and now? Between then and now. Well, the difference is back then I was me, and now I'm me. <laughs> <laughs> no better answer than that. Uh, you mentioned now that you know, it's hard for you to just go on a bus, let's say, for three days. Is there any other way that all the renown has changed your, your private life? Yeah, are you still able to keep a private life? To any, to any oh, degree? yeah, to some degree. You know, I, I, I mean, it's, it's, yeah, yeah, it's a private life, but it's just that uh, I don't really uh, get around much. You know? mm -hmm. I don't, uh, yeah, I keep a private life. It's down, you know, to a certain thing, but... Uh, it's, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's what it is. I can't really say any more about it than that, you know. It's, uh, I certainly don't want any cameras coming in on my private life. Yeah, you know. and you'd like to keep it private. Um, do you still have a motorcycle? Yeah, yeah, I still have a motorcycle. I don't really ride it too much, but yeah. I have it. Why the, because I remember you used to be very fond of that. Yeah, well, now I'm going to put my name on it and sell it for a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the, the lure of that kind of activity is kind of diminished. Well, I, I, yeah, when you come to think of it, that I, I have ridden it one time during the whole summer. It's kind yeah. of senseless to you. Why, uh, why did it stop? Well, I guess it, it stopped because I didn't ride it that much, you know. And a lot of people were fooling around with it, you know. Yeah. Just, uh, really, uh, something got messed up. We were talking about, about Joan, uh, you know, in terms of her political yes. and all. How about music? Because uh, remember you once said she changed your definition for a time of what of what beautiful was, because you thought it had to be ugly. In the well, same. no, you read that in the back of the liner yeah, notes. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, I I wrote those liner notes, you know. I wrote those liner notes. I, I can't... Yeah, well, I, don't, I really don't, I haven't even looked at them. I don't know what they say. Yeah. You know. But do, how, you know, how do you... How do you uh, in a sense, assessor, uh, and also, what do you think about the fact that she's using more and more of your songs? Do they sound that much different when she does them? Yeah, uh, they, 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 she does them okay. You know, there's a thing like that. Uh, uh, she 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 sings very well. You know, like yeah. certain kind of thing. Uh, she she sings really, really very good. It's it's not the kind of thing where where you can really listen to all the time, you know, or anything, but mm -hmm. it's like, uh, it is a thing, you know, it's, it's, it's a thing, it's definitely Joan Baez, you know, is, you know, it's, uh, it sings uh, validly, you know, and, and what she does is, is uh, you know, it's good, it really is, yeah. you know. Uh, a lot of things she sings are, are, you know, that good, but, uh, you know, have you ever had much conversation with her about nonviolence? You know, she's opening an institute or a training center. No, I have no. Uh, I beat her up once. That's about <laughs> all. <laughs> I take it then that your 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 philosophy doesn't necessarily encompass nonviolence as an as an absolute. I, I don't. I don't. I've never met any nonviolent person. You know, when I meet somebody that's really nonviolent, I can see how they act. I, I can, uh, you know, I will. I will then. Uh, make a decision as to whether nonviolence is uh, is worth it you know, yeah. uh, to anybody at all. But I've never met anybody that's nonviolent. Do you want to elaborate on that beating her up or did we just drop that? <laughs> yeah, I just beat her up, that's all. Okay. <laughs> um, she wanted me to be nonviolent. <laughs> <laughs> From what you've said, it, it comes down to, you know, living in the present, not worrying or expending energy on the future. Now, Beyond that, and this is a slippery word, but what what are your values, and just for yourself, not in terms of what anybody else thinks? I mean, what is meaningful to you in, in, in how you live? What makes it? What doesn't make it? Catch the answer. Uh, uh, I started to ask about a hard word to to put in the words values. What you know? What you live by? It sounds like Rita's Digest, but. What what makes it and what doesn't in terms of your own feeling about about what's worth doing and what isn't worth doing? Well, anything is worth doing, really. And in terms of the values, I just don't have any values. You mm -hmm. know, uh, 
I really can't, you know, I can't really think of any. You know, uh, I'll do anything once. Yeah. You know? But it's like, uh, It's, I just don't. I just don't have any values. You know, in terms of the values, are supposed to raise your standard of being. Evidently, you know. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't matter to me about my standard of being. You know, I know in my own mind. You know that uh, that uh, I don't want to hurt anybody or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's about all I can say about it. You know. Uh, but then again, I know a lot of people are hurt that it's not really me that hurts them, you know? What do you mean? Well, I mean, like, they're just deceived, but, but like, I haven't hurt them any, you yeah. know? But then again, you can actually come out and hurt somebody, you know? Like, I don't really worry too much about people who say they've been hurt by me because, you know, 99 times out of 100, it's not me that hurts them. Yeah. But that's a value, then, is it? Isn't it? Uh, not wanting to hurt anybody. Well, I guess so, but, you know, it's, uh, I mean, I would think that it's everybody's thing, you know. But is it? Mm -hmm. Oh, no, of course not, yeah. but <laughs> I guess not. Yeah. Well, well, then even, you know, I I even that it ceases to be of value, you know, when, when you, even, even if there is somebody that wants to hurt somebody, you know, like, like what, what a person goes out and finds somebody that likes to be hurt. <laughs> You know, and they just keep it there on that level. Like, I'll hurt you, yeah. and I won't hurt anybody else if you promise not to be hurt by anybody else except me. You know? What you're saying, then, is that everything is really relative. There aren't any absolutes. I would think so. Yeah. <laughs> Do you ever envision that you might get interested in politics or in foreign affairs, no, you know, like I'm some of the folk singers are? No, that's really not my thing at all. Yeah. I, I can't really see myself up on it. Mm -hmm platform with uh, with uh, ways to help people yeah that, that, that they're if you know that aren't going to get me killed really if I really wanted to help anybody what do you mean well I mean if somebody really got something to say you know and they really can help somebody out and do just bluntly you know I mean obviously they're going to be done away with you know? yeah do you have any uh any people in public life, not heroes, but people that you especially respect for one reason or another. In public life? Yeah. Um, well, I'm sure there are some, but I, I don't know of any. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Are there any groups or, or musicians we haven't talked about uh, that you'd have? something to say about, like, I don't know, the Righteous Brothers or Sonny and Shira, mm -hmm. what you think about what they do? No. No, I can't really... They're okay, you know, I don't... I don't. The, lo the last thing I wanted to ask was, uh, going back, all the various things that, that became part of your, your, your growing up process as a, as a musician and as a composer, Remember you mentioned uh, Big Joe Williams, among others. Who, how did how did all this, you know, take shape so far as you can look back? Well, I just, you know, made up my mind very early that uh, that uh, if there was anything you wanted, you know, <laughs> you really had to, uh, you really had to, you know, make an attempt to uh, sacrifice everything, a lot of things. And there was nothing really that I wanted, because uh, you, know, you can look around and see people that have got just about anything you'd want to think to have, mm -hmm. and you can see how they are, you know, yeah. how they act, and uh, what how they're like, you know. How, so how, I, how do they act? I mean, how, you mean... Well, they just act very uh, strange, let's say, people who've, you know, yeah. uh, who've got it all, you know, and uh, inheritance and stuff like that, you know and nice things, and that's all they've got, you know, is there, things like that. Well, I didn't want anything like that. I knew that what, what, whatever I did, it, it, was, it would be in terms of uh, some kind of, some kind of, uh, some kind of creating something. And I don't know what it was, but, but it was me that did it, you know. Mm -hmm. Something which I could also do, you know, just for, you know, me. So I, I just made up my mind not to have anything, you know. 
How old were you when, when this was? Well, I don't know, about 18, 17. Yeah. I knew there was nothing I ever wanted, you know. Material, you mean. Yeah. yeah. And I didn't want anything, and, and I just made it from there. I just, so I just drifted around. I mean, I've been, I've been up a lot of times, right, in places with no place to go, and it's been very early morning and stuff like that, and it never phased me. It was never like... Well, here I am, stuck on the highway, bumming down the railroad line, you know, and I feel sad, you know. Yeah. It wasn't that kind of thing at all. It was like right out of my mind. Well, does all this bread now, like I read you're going to make a million and a half in the next 18 months, does that mean anything to you? Well, yeah, all it does is it enables me to uh, to stay away and not get, uh, you know, not really go insane with uh, all the people that grab at you. And uh, the... Mm -hmm. It's honest, you know, it's honest bread. I mean, it's honest in terms of... When you say when we're talking about all the bread, what we're talking about is not the concert money or the, or the uh, you know, the record sales money, yeah. that stuff. And in terms of so the, the money is, has come from just writing these songs. That's where most of it yeah, comes from. Yeah, most of it comes from there. And, and that, all that money, you know, like it's there, I really can't... Uh, I really can't think about it one way or the other. Do you have that scene where somebody takes care of it and invests it? Oh yeah, yeah. It's a, I don't even touch it, man. It's yeah. well, I don't want anything to do with it. I don't. I don't, don't want to be like that. What and do you think is going to happen to it eventually? <laughs> well, eventually it'll probably just blow away. You know, <laughs> back where it came from. <laughs> do you think Europe renown is going to blow away? You know, the way things sometimes just oh, disappear. Oh sure, to you know, a whole crowd of people it just buying the hit records now, the majority of those people probably won't have heard of me for a couple of years, and probably. Then, and then maybe a new generation of kids might find somebody else. Yeah, I don't really worry about fading in or fading yeah. out, though. That's that's another thing. In a way, would you welcome being anonymous again? Well, I would to a degree, but not really. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't want to be anybody except me. Yeah, I'm anonymous only in the sense that you could walk down the street and... Uh, Oh yeah, well anybody would welcome that. That's that's another thing. But then again, being me, I can get all sorts of little things, you know, favors and stuff like that from yeah. for other people, you know. So that's. Oh, we did. We didn't go back to that. The well, various kinds of musics that, as you were growing up, uh, helped shape what you were going to do. Rick Joe Williams was one. Well, that was later. That was yeah. when I was when I left there. Well, the only music I heard up until I uh, left Minnesota was, uh, I didn't hear any folks music at all. Yeah. I just heard uh, you know, country and western music, rock and roll, and polka music. Who were the ones that you heard then that uh, you especially dug? Country and western, let's say. Oh, just about all the people. It's Marty Robbins, I guess. No, Marty Robbins, I didn't take it. And then uh, Lexi Fizzell, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Farron Young, all those people like and that. rock and roll? Well, all the people that were around, Elvis Presley, and Carl Perkins, Gene Vincent, Buddy Holly, mm -hmm. uh, Jerry Lewis. And then what was added on, like in the folk field? Well, then, then it came down to the fact that uh, to make it alone, you had to, you know, play alone. So you discovered folk music where people actually played alone, mm -hmm. you know. Then, you know, first it started with, you know, Odetta. No, no, it starts with Harry Belafonte. Yeah. Of course, it starts with Harry Belafonte, you hear him. And right away, you know that he's not really where it's at. Why? Well, I mean, it, you know, you know right away, and you haven't got that much time to spend <laughs> on, 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 on Harry Belafonte. I mean, you know that he just doesn't know that many songs. Yeah. <laughs> and then Odetta. And then Odetta. And you go through these stages, Josh White, to finally you arrive at Willie Guthrie, who... Who, who sounds pretty weird, yeah. you know, and, and uh, obviously who looks like, uh, you know, looks like you to some kind of degree. And I went to, I went to all Woody Guthrie songs, and then, you know, then the, the folk music, which I'd heard somewhat to a degree. Yeah. I knew people that sung Barbara Allen and stuff like that, yeah. and uh, you know, I listened to all that music. And a lot of it I've heard before. I mean, I really actually have heard before. I've actually heard old people singing a lot of the folk songs. That, 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 like, uh, Lord Thomas and mm -hmm. stuff like that. I've heard these songs before when I was young. I mean, around where you grew yeah. up? Yeah, yeah, I've heard people sing. I never paid much attention, you know, to, yeah. to people that did it, but people, uh, you know, the people sitting in their porches, man, sometimes, you know, 
when you'd w walk by, they wouldn't be singing anything that would share on the radio. They'd be singing mm. folk songs, you know. Yeah. So who wanted to hear them? Yeah, like they were drag, you know. <laughs> but I remember hearing them. Yeah. You know, and, and uh, you know, it, it was stuff like that. After Guthrie, was there anybody particular? Uh, no, not really. Woody Guthrie really hasn't influenced that. Where, where I'm doing what I'm doing now, he hasn't. He hasn't had much to do with the influence of his past two records. Uh, in fact, he really hasn't had any influence at all on the past two records. Yeah, I haven't heard any. The, the, the influence has all been on the first record, second record, yeah. third record. The fourth one was kind of wearing off a little bit, but. Uh, that's was still in, confined to the folk music circle. When I say influence, I mean total influence. I mean either writing or, or singing. You know, yeah. uh, I mean his influence is 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 in his uh, is in his uh, manner of speaking. You know, yeah. his influence is in his in his uh, topics that he writes about. His influence lies in his uh, phrasing. You know, and stuff like that. Uh, no, there's really no influence in him. I don't know what it is anymore. It's it's not it's not influenced by him really at all as much as the songs are influenced by sounds. Sounds. Yeah, the the songs are just are the songs are just uh, you know, like opening up a window, you know, and just looking out on the street, you know, like every it's all gonna be a different street. Yeah. And or just being out on the street, just a whole a whole kind of thing which which is not a thing to write about. I don't write about anything anymore. These songs aren't about anything. Yeah, there's a kind of surrealistic feeling, especially in the last record. What you get are all kinds of images getting together. It's a very provocative kind of thing. Well, you see, know, I, I, they're not really images to me. Yeah. You know, like I, I know what they are. They're, they're, mm. they're real. You know, like yeah. they're, they might be images to other people who've never seen them. Mm -hmm. You know, like, uh, but I know what those things are. And uh, my, when, when it comes time for me to be an image maker, I mean, you're really going to hear some fantastic images. But up till now, there's been no images, really. Yeah. Well, how do you define an image maker? Something which I haven't seen, you know. Yeah. Oh, I see where it comes entirely out of your imagination. Yeah. How These do you songs are not out of my imagination. Out of experience. Mm. Yeah, we can call it experience, I guess, or something. Yeah what you've seen or whatever. Yeah. How do you feel when you hear kids coming up now who try to sound like you? You know, all of a sudden you're a, an influence. I'd like that. You know, I'd rather have, them, have me for an influence than, uh, you know, uh, Carol Baker. <laughs> you know, or, you know, or Warren Beatty or somebody like that. Yeah. It's like I wanted to be sure I was clear on one thing. You feel more like performing now because the group's with you, which means that there's less of that kind of yeah. Of also, so because I just as want as to, I really yeah. dig it. You know, mm -hmm. I, I dig it, and and uh, the halls are all very full. You know, and this it's it's just a thing now. I always wanted to do it. You know, why do you think? Why do you think it's become more uh, fun for you? Mm -hmm. in the last well, it's good because I, I'm more in control. I know what I know what it's you know I know I know what it's. Well, I know more. It's like uh, I don't know what I'm doing, you know. Before I used to do it, I, it, it was it, it. It just happened. Like, like you want a concert for a long time, you know. And the first big concert I played remember, was in Philadelphia, and we just went there, you know, in the car. And then I got out, took the guitar, and went up to the stage and sang for about three and a half hours. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> I didn't know what I was going to sing. I was just standing there trying to think of things to sing. Yeah. And I said, I just, you know. And then I, after the concert, I just put the guitar back in and we all left. Mm -hmm. That was a town hall. And uh Philadelphia or Yeah, in Philadelphia. Yeah. And then we had next one the next night. It was like the same thing. You know, that was fine for them, but I couldn't keep on doing that. I couldn't do that nowadays. I, I wear off my clothes every time I get on the stage. I can't uh You mean there's that much wear and tear? Or? Well, yeah, it's either that or else uh, I'm really I play it now, you know, like no, it's like every I, mean, I got I'm not just standing there and thinking of what to play. Like it's all down now, and, and mm -hmm. I know it, sort of, you know. And uh, you're a professional. Well, I hate to think of my terms myself in terms of that. I hate, yeah. to, I hate to think of my terms and self of that. Really. <laughs> Do you think of yourself in terms of being a folk singer? Does that term mean anything to you? No, it means absolutely nothing to me. 
folks in here. I know what folk music is, you know, that's why I really can't call myself a folk singer. Why? Well, you know, it's like, uh, people, like, they're talking about folk music nowadays, like, most of the people talking about it, I don't even know what they're talking about, you know, it's like when they, they always say that in folk music, you can keep something simple, so pe the people can understand it, right, mm -hmm. and they, and well, they, uh, actually they're insulting a bunch of people by calling them people, right, and so the people can understand it, you know, Whereas when they really want to look at folk music and you know, the folk songs, there are some really strange, weird folk songs, you know, that have you know, come down to the ages based on nothing, based on a, you know, on a legend or Bible or, you know, plague or, you know, or religion, and just based on mysticism. There are a lot of those folk songs, really a lot of them. But, and, and it's, you know, I don't understand where all this business is. You know, you got to just keep things simple. This is like a labor movement kind of thing, which is all just total, you know, waste. Yeah. Look at all these labor people. They're all, they're all rich uh, suburb uh, people who tell their kids not to buy Bob Dylan records. You mean the ones who came up with the simple labor songs of the 30s? Huh? Yeah, which side are you on? I'll, I'll ask an I mean, which side are you on? And which side can you be on? I mean, it's really only two sides, anything, you know. <laughs> Why don't you consider yourself a folk singer, then, in terms of what you know about folk music? Well, because I got a very deep respect for it, you know. I, I respect folk music. I mean, I really do. You know, I, it's great. You know, it's great music. You know, there's no doubt about it. You know, I'd rather listen to it sometimes than anything. But... It's not a thing to play with. You, know, you can't play around with it and have folk song groups and have folk gatherings and uh, sing a bunch of folk songs. It's not that kind of thing at all. And you know, it's just not that people have just lost the point. That is not that is not the, the point of, of what a folk song is and who a folk singer is. You know, what what is the point and who is a folk singer? Well, you know, you have a lot of these people in the South like, uh, who just sit around on places and. Uh, they don't want to be bothered with any collectors or Alan Lomaxes or anything like that. Man, they're not going to sing any songs over tape recorders. Yeah. They're not going to do that. They sit around, you know, and uh, they can sing all by themselves. Or, or if somebody's in the room, they, they won't even know you. They're like a writer. You know, they're like uh, they're like totally in a world of their own. And they sing songs about things which which mean something to them, but don't mean a thing to anybody else. They talk about roses growing out of people's brains, you know, and, uh, you know, lovers who are, who are geese, and, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, swans who turn into angels, and, you know, and, and uh, you know, some very hard stuff, you know, like, uh, much more harder than that. That's, they, they really talk about things which you know they know about, or if they don't know about, can feel it. That's what folk music, that's a folk song, a folk singer singing a folk song, that's what I would think of. I certainly wouldn't so much, I would think of any, you know, 22-year-old kid going to, a, you know, a labor rally and singing some union songs. This is, this you mean a folk, song, a folk singer is where it comes out of a, a whole, you know, a whole world, really. It's yeah, background it's a whole world in somebody's head, you know. Yeah. Well, a folk singer, you know, it can be a gas station man, really, you know. We don't have to call folk singers, you know, Southern Mountain Farmers. We, we don't have to call a folk song, uh, you know, a song that has been living for, you know, 1,800 years. We can call anything folk song, you know. Providing it's... Providing, it's, 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 it, providing that it's just, it is, it is in a rhythm of its own and mm -hmm. in, a, in a time of its own and somebody else is... Uh, Whoever listens to it is allowed to listen to it, you know. Allowed? You mean uh, uh, they're allowed to listen to it, not not even to make a comment on it. It's not. You know, a it's it's like not a performance, in other words. Right. right. Yeah. It's not a yeah. performance at all. Then what what do you call yourself or consider yourself? Well, obviously, when I'm on the stage, I'm performing. Now the records aren't performances. We could have made this last record a lot better than we did, but it's all down there, you know. Uh, but I, are you a folk singer then on the records? No, I'm not a folk singer, really, at all, you know, I'm, I, I'm, I'm not, I could call myself a folk singer, I mean, if, if it would mean anything, but it doesn't mean anything. What do you call yourself? I don't call myself anything, I mean, I really don't. <laughs> I, I'm sort of a slot machine, uh, slot machine wonder. Yeah, what, do you, uh, what do you mean? I don't, I don't really have any, any, any Can titles which, which I would really want to claim, you know. Yeah. 
Is there anything I haven't asked that you think would be relevant or irrelevant? I don't know. Well, no, it's really... I don't know, somehow... I mean, somehow even the, the, the you know, the idea of where this is even going to go. This <laughs> interview is just... It's just uh, say some more about that. I want to see. <laughs> I want to see. I mean, who's even going to read it? You know, I mean, like you take the kinds of kind of people that are going to read it. Yeah. And how much is the magazine? First of all, it costs what you know, a dollar or something. Like a quarter or something like that. Yeah, you know, I mean, there's going to be a certain dollar. kind of people that's going to read that magazine. Seventy-five. So certainly, you know, like, you know, like uh, three million. You know, I don't want to. You know. Yeah. You know, it's funny that I'm in a magazine and you make some bunny chicks someplace, you know, to be in the magazine, but, like, I don't see any, anything that's really going to be done, you know, yeah. uh, uh, you know anybody's going to, to know anything, because I can't, I don't know where the outlet is for what I do, you know. Mm -hmm. The only outlet I know of is records, and I don't know who buys the records. It's the same the magazine, I have no idea really who buys the magazine, except that I know it's a very funny-looking group of people, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I mean, people in which I don't really associate with. I don't know anybody that associates with. Yeah. And we, we go to towns and we see the Playboy clubs. Yeah. And we see the people going to the Playboy clubs, but God, man, like this. That's just that, you know, it's uh, who wants to go in a Playboy club, you yeah. know? You said, and this is the very last thing, do you think anything can be done by any one person to change anything? Well, I don't know, like, I used to have spent, you know, it's about uh, to change things, you know, like, uh, it used to be that for days and days I would walk around in the same clothes, you know. But nowadays I change clothes, you know, once a day. <laughs> and, you know, if I can possibly get to it, I change them more. I change them more, you know. And I think that's a big step. That's know, about the for me. That's that, about the it, one possibility of change. And that's, that's about the only change I see. The other change is destruction, you know. And you think that might happen? Well, I don't think it'll happen here. I just don't think people are ready for it. You know, I don't think that everybody's so destructive as it is that if anybody wants to destroy something, there are enough people around to destroy whatever it destroys, you know. Yeah. But if you want to change something, man, you know, what, what's all this talk in business? You want to change something, you just wham, you just destroy it, you know, or else don't talk about it. Or sing about it. Right? Thank you very much. You had a lot of patience.